it's the background chapter of my thesis, part, part, partly because, uh, well, it's a short paper, so it wouldn't have fit the whole thing. Um, what motivates uh, knowledge management on the desktop, particularly the semantic desktop, are a set of quite old challenges. Um, the biggest, biggest of one would be information overload. You've heard about it even this morning in the keynote. So there is loads of information out there. The, the trickiest part is finding what, uh, what you're looking for. And even more so, uh, finding it when you're looking for it. Um, even though it's quite an old problem, uh, so Nelson was among the first ones to, to see it appear in computer systems. So he mentioned how uh, the proliferation of uh, well, uh, personal computers and the increase in space will probably lead to uh, this problem. Then there is the problem of data silos and the problem that information is locked in application-specific formats, which leads to a lot of duplication, a lot of um, duplication of work, and also a lot of um, unsynchronized information that you have on the desktop. Uh, the third part with the uh, trusting information, this doesn't necessarily come from, um, from the fact that there are uh, sources which would feed you intentionally wrong information, but rather that information changes over time and you, if you have it in sev several sources, you won't know which is the most accurate one, which is the most uh, real, like, real-time one. And then the associative trails, these are an idea that was uh, started, well, yeah, um, initiated by uh, Bush, Vannevar Bush, uh, in the 40s and Engelbart in the 60s, he sort of implemented it partially. So um, for, for this survey, I was reading loads of old pre-PDF papers and uh, they are fascinating, uh, especially Bush's papers, they, when, when he writes about the Memex, in the four, 1945 even, um, he's pretty much describing the, the semantic desktop well, first of all, a personal computer, but also the, the semantic desktop as we imagine it today. Um, then uh, Douglas Engelbart and Ted Nelson, they, in parallel, they were trying to achieve the vision of the Memex in the 60s and 70s, and they were aiming to realize these associati associative trails. Um, so if you have a chance, do read these old papers, they are quite interesting. Um, there are a lot of modern semantic desktops. I was in doubt if I should say modern with quotes or not because modern means something else. Um, even this list is not complete. They are, um, in this paper, I, I restricted it even more to this uh, few systems. Um, and I'll talk briefly about how their architecture is, how they represent data, and how they are evaluated. Um, right, so the architecture is quite similar to, well, all of them are um, service-oriented and layered architecture. Uh, the layers are a bit fuzzy, as uh, I'll show, I'll, I'll describe later. So there's a data layer, a service layer, and the presentation layer where the applications lay. Um, the data layer because uh, is quite important and it's at the center of all the systems uh, because all the systems are in fact data centric so they they are based on the data that the user ha the users have on on their desktop um, the data layer contains all the all the data there the semantic data uh, and its main functions are to to create this network of uh, link linked personal information on the desktops even like from, from desktop, uh, from application repositories and from uh, specific formats. Uh, all the systems that I surveyed uh, have a data model. Some are more um, uh, comprehensive, so they try to define everything in the world, well, or at least everything in the personal information management 
world uh, from, from the applications on the desktop. Some are smaller, they're trying just to define the, the bare necessities, the, just the basic concepts for the user to be able to use the systems. Uh, some of them are monolithic, so they, there is one large ontology which defines all the concepts. Um, some of them are divided into domains, and so they are quite modular. Uh, for instance, Mose uh, has a different ontology for each application, while, uh, for instance, Semex tries to, uh, has a very small ontology which makes no sense to split it. There is also another category that where I, I didn't put here uh, a line <laughs> for it. Uh, some systems, they are not semantic. They don't say they are semantic. They are semantic because they interlink information. However, they use uh, databases to store the data, or, and then the database schema is, uh, is the data model. Uh, I'll move now into the service layer. So I was saying that the layers are, the three layers are fuzzy because for instance, the storage service uh, from, the story, uh, from the service layer is, could be considered also at the data layer, in the data layer because it handles the data. So the storage can be either semantic, uh, semantic uh, triple store or it can be in a database or in text files there are systems which used all three, uh, all three systems. There are systems that combine two of them. Um, extraction is a service that appears in all, all the systems that were surveyed. Uh, what the extraction service does, even though it might not come as a service <laughs> or as a, a service with this name, it, uh, it crawls the information from the desktop applications and it transforms it into a semantic form. So all this uh, goes into, into the storage service from before. Uh, usually, this extraction service comes also with an integration service, which has the task of determining if two extracted objects are in fact the same thing. And this is quite an important important service, and it appears in most of the, of the systems. So the integration is probably the most important task of, uh, of the semantic desktop. Then there are other services, like for instance annotation service or query service, um, inference service, but this, these don't really appear in all of them, all the systems. Uh, also the annotation system uh, service, it's not always a service, so it might come uh, as part of the APIs or, and the uh, functionalities of the applications. The services and the, and the data, so the architecture, is uh, in most systems designed according to the Blackboard architectural system uh, pattern. And in this pattern, the experts are actually the desktop services, each doing their own function and the blackboard is the data storage. So all the services operate on the, the same area, on the, on the same data, and they are controlled by the storage service, which is a sort of an intermediary between the specialized services and the, the data itself. Now the applications, um, these are for the user the most important parts of, of the systems. And there are two categories of, the of uh, semantic desktops. There are some semantic desktops which try to uh, just enhance existing applications, which I think it's the better way of, of doing it, because this way the users don't have to um, yeah, learn again new applications. So they can just use their old applications and just enjoy the semantic features. And then there's another category of systems which replace existing applications completely with new semantic ones. This, uh, although it might be easier on the developers and it might allow them to, to include better all the semantic features, uh, for the users it's not as easy to, to first of all move all their data to a new application, but then also get used to it. Um, a key feature of, of all the systems is that they try to provide flexible visualizations of the semantic data. So, because all of them eventually create quite a large 
network of, of semantic information, showing that to the users is quite Im um, important. And probably the best well-known system which offers flexible visualizations would be Highstack. But all the other ones as well, they, they at least acknowledge the necessity of like, flexible visualizations. Um, and one application that seems to appear in all the systems is one uh, mega type of application which uh, shows the contents of, of, the, of the repository and allows the users through it to, to get access to all the data regardless of the domain of the application. So for instance, if, if uh, an email, a semantic email client would allow you to see just the semantic email and related resources, a resource browser, for it, it would show all, all the information that's there from projects to emails to tasks, everything. Although probably not as well because it's not a speci specialized tool. Um, well, we know from, from uh, Diane Kelly's paper that evaluating PIM uh, applications is difficult for several reasons and all these are reflected as well, all the difficulties in evaluating semantic personal information management tools. Um, this long-term study done by Leo Zaurman on Gnosis showed that users actually prefer simple terms in the ontologies. So even though they uh, get, with Gnosis, they get the option of choosing between very specialized properties and classes, they prefer to use just uh, the relate, uh, to show that two instances are related rather than picking the, the precise property. Because apparently for users, it's enough to show that, they, that there is a connection. And also, many systems allow customization of the underlying data representation model. Uh, but this study showed that there are very few, as in very, very few uh, users, power users who will customize their ontologies. Um, Frant, Thomas Franz uh, has two papers in which uh, he evaluates his XCOSIM system uh, against uh, non-semantic applications and he finds uh, that indeed semantic applications are better. Um, and the way uh, XCOSIM system works is that uh, they, ha they provide, so they enhance existing applications. So um, the studies are quite, quite uh, nice. So as a conclusion, all the systems that I surveyed, uh, they start from the same motivations, the very old motivations, um, have the same goals, and they have very similar architectures. Uh, their outcomes, um, well, the main, most important out outcome is the, the connected information, personal information that gets created and accessible to all the applications on the desktop. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I have time for the rest. Thank you. Thank you Questions? Questions? So, I don't know, do you want to comment a little bit on, I mean, the, the future direction that this semantic test should go? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah well. A comparative evaluation, maybe you can see. Most of the systems that I surveyed, not all of them, but most of them are within the years 2005, 2006, and 2008 and 9. And after that, they, the research doesn't stop, but the systems don't seem to evolve anymore, or if they do, they move towards the cloud, which shows a clear um, direction that personal information is not only on the desktop anymore, which was obvious anyway. Um, the same thing happened um, to Gnosis, I think uh, Chandler, um, many, many of them, they seem to, to move um, to other source, data sources so outside of the desktop. Um, there were all research systems, so that could also be a reason to, because students finished their <laughs> Uh, work and moved on. Um, but as we tried to organize uh, a workshop about personal semantic data in ICAO, and we didn't really get enough submissions, so uh, we were talking among uh, the organizers, and uh, one of us said that 
there is still loads of work to be done. It's just that it's very hard. <laughs> so that could be one reason why um, we're sort of not, not necessarily stuck, but um, yeah, it's, there are no easy, easy pickings anymore. Okay, so thanks again. Thank you.